Hi, I'm Gary Wagnon of the 800 Biz Ninja Marketing, and I want to, Brett, I want to talk to you a little bit today about building an effective presence online. So, what is, what does that mean? What's your online presence? Well, it's everything that has to do with your, um, your branding, your imagery that happens on the web. So, websites, uh, email branding, graphics, videos social media, it's, it's the whole gamut of everything that happens. And why do we need to worry about our presence? I mean, is it that, well, is it whatever we have going to be all we get? Well, your goal with your online marketing presence is to stand out above the competition. So what makes you different? What makes your company um, stand out from the crowd and not be just another one of the millions and billions of websites that are out there that have, uh, that do the same thing you do? Well, you want to start with a domain name that represents your business. Obviously, you want to cover the branding of your domain, of, of your business. You also want a website and a hosting plan. The website is the, the anchor point for all your marketing efforts. And hosting is basically housing your website and presenting your website online through a, a, a series of web servers. Off-site marketing pieces such as email lists, reviews, social media sites, and then you want to measure uh, a process to measure that success to know if it's getting the results rather than just take a shot in the dark. You want to know if your if your efforts are generating results. So how do you measure those metrics? So let's start with selecting the right domain. First of all, I get questions a lot of times. What should I use for a domain name? Well. You want, number one, you want to protect your business, your, uh, your branded identity. So your business name should be one of the things you have as a domain name. Um, mine is 800biz Ninja Marketing. So I have several different domain names. I have 800biz.com, which is my original domain, my original website. But I also have 800biz Ninja Marketing.com. I have 800bizmarketingninja.com. I have 800biz dot. Uh, I have 800bizninja dot marketing. I have 800bizmarketing dot ninja. So I've got a number of different domains that that cover my uh, my business branding. Uh, you don't have to build websites on each one. Uh, in my case, I have a couple of different sites, but I also have the majority of of those domains pointing to my pointing to uh, one my main primary domain so you can have multiple domains the other thing that you may want to consider is having a domain name if your business name doesn't mean anything so in, for example 800biz.com didn't really mean anything to to anyone so it might be more useful to have um, a domain name with your business keywords. So mine could have been 800biz website design, 800biz search engine optimization, 800biz, uh, or even a geographic, uh, a geo-targeted one. So Tucson websites, Tucson marketing ninja. A lot of different ways to go. So to give that some thought, but that's what you gotta do. And, and domains are cheap. Domains are, you know, uh, 12, 15 bucks a year. By the way, with domains, you don't buy the domain, you actually lease the rights to it for one year, from a year-to-year -year basis. Now, you can you can lease a domain up to 10 years, but as uh, but if you stop paying that, you you know, the domain can go back to uh, public into the public sector and anyone that wants to, the first come first serve can can buy that or lease that domain for themselves. So you want to make sure you renew your domain every year. .com is still preferable. People still put .com on the end of everything. It's almost a, a, a given. But there are a lot of, there's still a lot of other um, uh, designators you can use as well. You can still use .net. .org is typically reserved for companies and organizations, but uh, if you have a nonprofit or something like that, you may want to use the .org. And then there are hundreds of, of specific identifiers like mine, uh, for example, .marketing, 
dot ninja dot art a lot of different domains so if you think you want to use something like that they're available they're usually higher you usually pay a little more for those specialty type um, designators but there there are a lot of them out there you want to Ideally, you'd like to purchase your domain for multiple years, three to five years minimum, 10 years is, is even better. What happens is Google looks at the, uh, looks at the registry of the, of the domain and they say, well, it's only registered for one year. Okay, well, if it's only registered for one year, somebody doesn't think they're gonna be in business that long, so why should I give that much credit? So it can be a negative factor for uh, for a year-to-year -year rental until you've had you know, my 800biz.com domain, for example, is 18 years old. If I only renew it year-to-year, -year, Google goes, oh, that's not going anywhere. It's been in existence for 18 years now. So, but for a new startup domain, go ahead and spend the money, get it for uh, multiple years. Privacy. All of the all of the registrar uh, domain registry companies offer domain privacy, which means they'll hide your address. You have to put in a physical address when you register a domain name. Won't let you do it without it. Won't even let you do it with a PO box. I don't think. Um, so that physical address is important. But if you work out of your home, like so many people do, you may want to choose to pay the privacy, which is like ten bucks a year added on top of the renewal and that will hide your your contact information so that people can't see your email address your address uh, your name otherwise if it's public within 24 hours of you buying a new domain name you're going to get calls from people overseas wanting to sell you web design services and you'll get four or five of them almost almost immediately because they pick up on the new domains that are registered and immediately start telemarketing hoping they can get you to use their services which to me would be the worst possible thing you would ever want to do. I prefer GoDaddy for my domain names. They're very easy to work with but keep in mind they're going to try to sell you a lot of other stuff. They're going to try to sell you web hosting. They're going to try to sell you email support. They're going to try to sell you uh, security programs, backup services. I'm not a I, I'm not a fan of uh, GoDaddy for web hosting, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But by the same token, there I, I do like them for domains. So just uh, you know, just my uh, my thoughts on the domains. So now you've got your domain. Now you have to decide what kind of platform. Where do you want your website? How do you want to do your website? First of all, do you want to? Uh, are you going to do it yourself? Are you going to have somebody else do it for you? So, choosing the right platform is important. And we start off with what's the purpose of your website? Is so? Is it to drive traffic? Is it to generate leads? Is it just a portfolio of products or services? What are you wanting to do? What, what's your goal for your website? And answering these questions will help you determine what the best platform and the best, you know, the best service for you to create your website uh, you would want to choose. Another question, another question is to ask is how are you going to drive traffic to your site? Are you going to rely on paid ads like uh, Google AdWords or Facebook ads? Are you going to rely on social media? Uh, are you going to rely on, rely on search engines and people finding you when they do a search? And again, these all have, uh, have weighting factors on what will make the right choice for which, which uh, platform to use. So if your business, if your primary focus for having a website is a portfolio site, and by that I mean you're going to give people your business card uh, or your brochure and you want them to go to your website that's listed on there and check you out. That would be a portfolio type site. Uh, or if you want to use ads to drive traffic to your site, then 
that's a case where you might want to use a do-it-yourself type of platform like Weebly or Wix, one-on-one -on -one hosting, uh, GoDaddy's, in, uh, GoDaddy's website uh, central uh, offers that same thing as well. These are cases where you can build them yourself and, and you see the commercials, you know, you, you build your website in 30 minutes or less. Well, you can, but the problem is they typically don't show up well in search engines. But if you want to something that it's going to work and uh, that's going to get ranked in the search engines, then I recommend WordPress, which is probably the most, it is by far the most popular web development software or, or platform on the planet. Um, and I'll show you why in a moment. The templated sites, Wix, Weebly, GoDaddy, One and One, those guys, they build really nice looking sites, but they don't index in Google because part of the problem with the drag and drop ease of use software is they add so much code to the website that by the time you get down to the meat of what the website is all about, the keywords, the titles, the descriptions that, that describe what your business is all about, that it's way down the page and Google goes, hey, this is, you know, these are type freebie sites and I don't see the stuff I need and you know, it's not a really serious business, so they tend not to rank well in the websites. I mean, in, in the search engine ranking. So if you're looking for search engine ranking, go to uh, WordPress is the way to go. WordPress is used by millions and millions of websites. It's readily available on most web servers, so it's easy to find. Uh, you don't have to do anything special. There's no extra cost to add WordPress. Uh, very easy to use. The learning curve is relatively shallow. Uh, I have, in fact, I usually have, I have uh, uh, about an hour and 20 minutes of tutorials for everything you need to know about using WordPress that I, that I offer my, you know, clients and people that I work with. Thousands of theme designs. The, the look of WordPress is, revolves around a theme and you can choose from literally thousands of those themes. Many free, some are premium and paid for. Uh, I use a paid version for all of my sites, but it has a, a tremendous amount of flexibility and lets me build just about any kind of website or look I want, and I can customize every feature. So I, I use a premium version, but uh, it works out great for me. And one, it's a little more difficult to set up initially, but once it's set up, it's so much easier to use. Uh, WordPress is scalable. It grows as you need to. So as your business expands, you want to add new pages, you want to add new features. Easy to do without having to redesign and scrap what you have. Now a lot of people get confused when you say WordPress and they go, okay, well I'll go to WordPress. And so they do a search and they end up at WordPress.com. That's not what I'm talking about. WordPress.com is a free site with very limited functionality. It does not have all the features, all the whistles and bells that a self-hosted WordPress does. And by self-hosted, I mean you set up a web hosting uh, account at somewhere, whether it be HostGator or A1 or uh, One and One Bluehost. There's a Dream Host. There's a lot of them out there. But you set up a hosting account, so you're going to pay for the hosting. Hosting is going to be anywhere from seven eight bucks a month to 20 30 bucks a month depends on what you what you want and the features you have but as a general rule but you're so that's an ongoing expense you're going to have and you're going to pay that hosting month every month you maybe you you know, maybe you pay it a year at a time but just remember that's going to be an ongoing cost for you forever you quit paying the hosting your site disappears the other advantage of using a self-hosted is you own the content as long as you maintain your hosting plan and you renew your domain each year. Like I said, you don't pay the you renew, keep your hosting going or you don't renew your domain, your site disappears. But you own the content, WordPress.com, Weebly, Wix, all of those guys, that content is technically not yours. It's theirs. So this keeps it secure. Some of the advantages of WordPress you offer, I'll offer, you have a shopping cart. I mean, these are just a few of the functionality pieces that you can have. 
Um, you, you can put a shopping cart on there. You can put a photo gallery or multiple photo galleries. You can tie to your social media so that you feed your social media to your website or you can have people like, um, like your website, go to your uh, social media pages. You can do an email subscription so that you capture emails and you can uh, use that for marketing. You can have security firewalls and backups and you name it, there's probably a program for it. So that's one of the another advantage of WordPress, and it's it's very easy. Let's say you start out without doing an e-commerce site, and you decide at some point that you want to sell your products. I have a client right now that I'm working with that's doing exactly that. Ho hosted the site for a couple of years, built the site, but now they're deciding they want to go to um, they want to do e-commerce. So we're adding a shopping cart, and we're going uh, we're going to a a full e-commerce shopping cart setup. Some important things to ask or to consider and these are questions if you're considering having someone do your website for you. And, and I realize that it's easy to do it yourself and you're tempted to probably you know want to do the website yourself or maybe you've got a teenage kid that's that you're comfortable with or I mean that's that you think is pretty tech savvy. Bear in mind there's a lot more that goes into websites than just dragging and dropping and creating a, a nice looking website but is it going to do what you want? Uh, so I, I can't tell you over the years how many websites I've taken over that somebody started out or they had their brother-in-law or their nephew or you know uh, somebody like that design the website for them but they just weren't getting any business. Um, so, you know, it's, it's usually going to be well worth the extra cost to pay a web designer that knows what they're doing to build a site for you. But you want to start with some questions and you need to know the answers to these. So will your website be portable? And by portable, I mean, can you change host hosting companies? Can you move from one site uh, from one hosting company to another, can you take your site and move it? And the reason that's important is so many people utilize the Wix Weebly platforms and then they say, you know, this is not working. Can I move this to something else? And the answer is no, because those are proprietary. Your website is proprietary and only will work within their platform. It is not portable. You cannot take it anywhere else. WordPress, you can. So decide if it's going to be, if you want your site to be portable and you can move it. Who owns the content once it's complete? Now there's, there are copyright laws uh, that say whoever, uh, in, uh, dig, excuse me, intellectual property rights that say whoever created the content owns the content. But, and I've run into this on a few occasions where, um, somebody built the content for a site and the owner decided after a few years they wanted to move someplace else and they refused to give up the content of the source codes because they created it they owned it well a legitimate web designer somebody that's that's reputable would say you know what you paid me to create it it's yours so but who owns the content once it's complete is it scalable can it grow how difficult is it? Is it going to cost me an arm and a leg if I want to expand and, and add on features or add pages or add more, more content? Can you make the changes or will it require a webmaster? Uh, for years, sites that I built in HTML and uh, things like that, the for somebody to make a change, they needed special software they needed a, uh, an HTML editor, they needed a file transfer protocol software. It was not something that you just pop into Word and you make a few changes and voila, you've got the, you know, you've got the changes made. It required a webmaster for most people. Um, so again, with WordPress and the things that it does, you don't have to, you can make most of those changes yourself. So I, um, Another reason I like that. 
go fix problems on the site and at what cost? So you find something wrong uh, or something um, that's not quite, uh, not working the way it should, uh, who's going to fix that problem? And is it going to be, you know, at, what's the cost for that? And related to that is who's going to do the regular updates to WordPress? WordPress is very much like your antivirus program on your computer and the fact that it updates with regularity. And by that, I mean, I think we've done, had a couple of updates this month. Typically, the updates are a result of a security vulnerability that somebody finds in WordPress and that the hackers will use to exploit the site. So you go in and fix that, and WordPress then has to go in and patch that. But the problem is we have three different types of files in WordPress. You have WordPress core files, you have WordPress plugins, which are add-on programs, and you have WordPress theme files. So let's say you update a WordPress core file, the main guts of WordPress, but the theme or a plugin is not compatible. And then you end up with a site that crashes, our piece is not working, or something like that. And that's a there was an instance a couple of years um, back a year ago where a major update came down from WordPress that caused major havoc with a lot of websites. Now, fortunately, most of my sites were all um, made it through that fine, but I had probably a half a dozen websites. People that I knew that knew me call me to say my website's crashed and I need help. And the average cost was for me was about uh, three hundred dollars to try to get those sites replaced. So who's going to do those updates for you is an important thing to ask and make sure you understand because there is a serious potential for uh, for problems, and the average person cannot do that. It's it's well beyond the scope of the average uh, the average person. Does your web host offer SSL security uh, security certificate installation? One of the things that's happening is Google's pushing for uh, SSL certificates on all websites. And so you need that ability to offer that, especially if you're doing e-commerce, it's essential. But does your does your host offer SSLs? And, and this installation can be a little tricky. Uh, some additional questions. Who's going to do the design? Are you going to do it or are you going to have somebody do that design for you? And again, as we said, a lot of times in WordPress you can choose a theme, but you may look at a theme and you go, oh, I really love this theme, and so you purchase it or choose that one, and then you try to make it look like it looked on the page, and you find out it requires some serious customization, modification, or changes. So uh, who's going to do that for you? or who, who's going to do that, you or someone else. Do you want your site to be search engine friendly? Do you want your site, do you want Google to index your site? And if so, then it needs to be uh, search engine friendly and meet all Google's criteria. Who's going to make sure that happens? Uh, who's going to do the SEO? That's the search engine optimization. So again, um, there are specific formulas that need to be, that need to happen and you need someone that understands it. Who's going to write the content? This is one of the hardest things that uh, um, that people do is to come up with what their website is going to say. And do you want your web designer to do that? Are you going to do it? Do you have somebody else that's going to do that? We have a current site right now I've actually been working on for almost two years. Uh, and I haven't finished, it's not finished yet, not because my part's not done. I've, I've put all the pictures in. I've done everything we want to do. And all I need is some uh, descriptions of some projects that they've done, which I have the photos already in for. But I need the owner to give me some descriptions of the project so that I can put in there what you did in this so people with that reading that will know. And it's been two years. We still haven't finished that. So writing the content's difficult. So who's going to write that? Um, it's going to do the branding and graphics. I can't tell you the, number, the amount of time people go, wow, I really love this site. This is my favorite website. I want mine to look like that. I go, great, okay. 
do you have these graphics? Do you have a logo like that? Do you have web art? Do you have uh, you know different color elements and, and decorative elements and design elements that you can use? Because if not, somebody needs to create that. It's not something we can pull out of the air and and that often requires a graphic designer. But he's going to do that branded graphics for you. And Vistaprint logo that you put on your business card will not work on the on the web because number one, it's, you're not licensed to use that. So just keep that in mind. Uh, where are you going to get the images for the site? Do you have images, preferably your own? Your own are great if we can use those, but if not, where are you going to get them? And people are still going, well, I'll just go Google search for images and I'll, you know, I'll find stuff I like. Keep in mind, the majority of images you're going to find online are going to be copyrighted images. I'll tell you the story of a client that I had that found she did some holistic healing type things. She had a picture of her you know, cute little Buddha baby on her website. And so she had it on there for a while. And, a few, and about a year goes by, she gets a, a letter from Getty Images, which are the big bad boys. And they say, we see that you've been using our little Buddha baby image, and we appreciate that, but you don't have license for that, so send us $1,000. We don't care if you take it down, you still owe us that, and if you want to keep using it, then we'll negotiate for the use of that beyond this. So, unless you want to get that little nasty gram that says you owe us money, um, you need to make sure you're, you're paying, buying images, and I have some good sources for that. Another key factor, and one that's really pushing, uh, that's really been pushed uh, lately, is is your site mobile friendly? 76% 70, of all local searches, in other words, searches for a local business or a service, are done from a mobile device or a tablet, smartphone or tablet. That's incredible because if your website is not compatible with those mobile devices, in other words, it doesn't adjust to fit those devices, you may be missing out on business. Now you may say, well, yeah, I look at my website, it looks fine on there. But you gotta realize it, it may not be, it's not easy to touch, it's not easy to, uh, and just because it displays on a mobile device does not mean it's mobile compatible and Google friendly. Today, websites need to be mobile responsive. When I do a website, it typically creates about five versions. So there's a, a full-size desktop version. It also creates a large tablet version, a small tablet version, and a smartphone version, and sometimes even a, a laptop version. So what happens is the when somebody comes to your website, the first thing the website does is identify what kind of device is looking at it and the size of the screen and you know if it's a tablet or a smartphone it identifies that and it goes oh I see you're looking at me from a smartphone okay then let me show you the smartphone version and it adjusts and changes the menu so it's easy to tap it makes things scrollable uh, much it's the it's the ideal way to go plus Google loves responsive sites I have a client that's again it's 15 16 years ago I built a site for him and uh, the site worked well and he ranked well in the search engines but we had a, literally 10,000 products in there and so he wasn't able to afford to have me convert that to a uh, to a mobile version without it costing him more money than he felt like he could afford. And as a result, his, search, his rank in, ranking in the search engines dropped dramatically. So as of right now, I'm actually working out a, a deal out with him where I can help him get it back mobile and get it where um, he'll start performing better in the searches again. So mobile response is critical. So if your site is built more than a couple of years ago, it's probably not mobile responsive and it needs to be, uh, you need to uh, look at that. Is your site secure with an SSL certificate? You will notice that when you go to a, usually any kind of e-commerce site, you'll see the 
HTTPS in the upper corner, or you might even see a little lock in the lower right hand corner of, the, of this browser window. That's an indication that the site has a security certificate. And it was normally was required when you were doing e-commerce because you were collecting sensitive data. And, and it, would, it would encrypt that data before it sent it to the server, which was basically like you know, credit card information or personal information, uh, private information, security, social security numbers, and, you know, bank account information, that type of thing. But Google is now pushing to and, and saying that they will actually de-index at some point in time any site not using an SSL certificate. So it's going to be it's going to be required pretty much for every website out there that you have an SSL, and the cost is going to range. I've got twenty nine to three hundred dollars. I most of the time they average around eighty to a hundred bucks, hundred and thirty bucks. Um, some of them up to two forty a year. So that's the the range is a little higher than than that. But um, the the mid to upper part of the range is probably where you want to be. But then you also have the installation of the site, which is can be very tricky. And I've had even as with me that I've done this you know, a bunch of times. I've had cases where you know, it's taken me two weeks to get a certificate installed because of different little nuances and tricks and different things. So keep that in mind. But uh, having an SSL is going to be important. So let's talk about putting your site to work. So what are some of the things that will that you need that outside of the web business? So you've got your web design, you've got your site design, you've got all the features that, that you want. What are some of the things that you can do to help uh, utilize that and make your site more, um, actually do more, make it work for you? Email lists are still an important thing. You're, e you're keeping an email list and a subscription list. It's tricky because you might, you got to keep you've got to have people subscribe to it, and you have to give them some reason. But having an email list is an important piece of any marketing plan. Blogs are critical to search engine optimization. And a blog is basically just a, uh, an article that you write on your own website and you can share it to social media, you can share it to uh, various places, uh, but it ends up, uh, it has some tremendous potential. Reviews and testimonials are a critical piece. So getting customer reviews getting third-party reviews, getting testimonials on your website. That has a huge impact on how your site ranks and shows up. Off-site reviews like Better Business Bureau, Google My Business page, Yelp, uh, there's a, even specific ones and we'll talk about some more a little bit later, but those are, those are specific sites that you want to uh, encourage people to write reviews on. Social media sites, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, if you're a business is visual, um, a lot of different sites that way, but those are all things that you want to, you want to have presence there so that you, uh, so that if people use those sites, they want to be able to see who you are. And then video, video is a huge, huge component. It keeps people on your site, people want to be entertained, it creates that entertainment factor on your website and yet explains who you are, and it builds that trust factor that they know who you are and what you do.